Hi there, Robin here from Expert On. Today we're doing a revisit. We're doing a revisit of this mixer right here, the Alto Professional 1202. This is because over a year ago I did the video and somehow while trying to tweak it or edit it, I kind of deleted out three quarters of it. Things happen. So we're gonna do it over again, but we're gonna try and do it even better than we did the last time. We're also gonna include on this video all the accessories that you may need or may want. I also have a year's worth of you know, popular questions about mixers that I'm going to answer when actually reviewing this mixer. So that's what it's gonna be all about. We're gonna have it set up so this way we can work on it directly from top down, be easy to follow. And again, if you have any questions or comments after this video, of course, after you hit the subscribe button, after you hit the like button, did all those great things for me, I'll send it back to you on a, either a Q and A and about a week or so, we'll do one of those videos. We'll recover all the questions we get on the mixer, but it's a good chance this is a great time. We're gonna do a full video on this piece, but it's gonna cover the idea of mixing all together. So that's today's video. So don't forget, if you have questions or comments, you can put them down below. I'll answer them back on the next Q&A. So the number one most asked question on my mixer videos is what is the stand that the actual mixer is placed on? Well, it's called a PL PTS 55 from Pile, which is available in our showroom. It's also available on Amazon. So we'll have links down below for both of that because of course, everybody always asks, this does swivel and it's height adjustable. And amazingly enough, this is the part that really gets me is that you press this button here, adjust it, hit this button, and the whole thing packs away, comes with a bag and it all goes in here. So that, that is step number one to a mixer. If you wanna have something to show off your mixer, this is the way to go. All right, so here we go. We've got the mixer all set up. We've got the camera up above. And uh, first thing we need to do is power it up. So we're gonna find the power cord plug in here. We're gonna bring this up, see where that is. Locate that right there. Uh, while we have it up, let's take a quick moment. We're gonna cover, there's a power cord. There's our on switch, which we're gonna need on. USB connection, tape in and outs located right here. Then we have our control room out, which is neat because it's on the backside, I do like that. And then we have our TR, TRS, which are quarter inch connections as our main outs. And we also have XLRs for main outs. So all that is located on the back. We'll get more to that in a second, but I just thought we'd cover that right away. Let's put this guy back down here. Okay. So, on the mixer, now this is a mixer we use here a lot. This is a mixer that I have on my main wall uh, most of the time. And uh, I do because it has seven mic inputs. Now it is called a 12 channel mixer and that's because all the way across what we're gonna see is mic inputs. But more importantly, if we follow all the line inputs right up to here, these ones have insert jacks on the bottom of them. Those are my line inputs on top. But then when we get to channel seven and eight, boom, two channel, nine, 10, two channel, 11, 12, two channel. Now these are all very important features to note because that's really gonna happen down here. And it's also gonna happen to what we're gonna end up as an output capability. So if you're, first of all, let's start with the basics, the jacks. Uh, we've got seven mic inputs. Notice I said mics right here. The little writing is for a microphone. So we got, it says mic, 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 mic. And that's all referring to the actual jacks on top right here. That's referring to all these guys right on top. The next one says line. So this is what they're referring to. So if you have a mic that you bought and it came with a jack, a quarter inch jack like this, uh, that doesn't go into one of these guys that we need to get a cable so we can plug it up there. So you are gonna need an XLR cable to do that because that's where the mics go on a mixer. Underneath you have on the first four, is inserts. Inserts are so if you wanna add a specific effects box, a uh, 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 reverb, uh, any type of effects, compressor, uh, limiter, that sort of thing. I mean, anything that's external, it usually looks like a little blade and it does something very unique and something special for that. You need to have a cable that's gonna do that. Now, they are, let's say, TRS, so it's a stereo for you know consumer terminologies. So we've got three points on here. Uh, TRS, to be exact, that's what's here. Uh, two and unbalanced, two of them. So that's why one's red, one's white. When I plug this in here, this is going to allow me to have a send return. So that means the signal will come out of here from the microphone, poof, out of here, go to whatever I wanna plug that into and have it come back to the actual unit processed. Maybe it's an effects, maybe uh, it's a compressor or a limiter, all that kind of stuff. But that's, that's what 
inserts are for and that's how they work. So if you always see them and you're wondering, what do I do with that? Well, that's what you need right there. So the first four cover that, then the rest of them are stereo. Now, uh, if you've played around with mixers before and you get to a mixer that has uh, two channels in one, this is now a stereo channel, left and right channel. That's what's happening right across there. That's important because that is going to change the wording on the balance. Now we get to the very bottom knob. So we go through, we're gonna skip all of that. And we're gonna work our way up. The bottom knob, when it's just microphones, so there's no left and right input. There's just line one, line two, line three, line four, one, two, three, four for mics. This is different. You're gonna have a pan feature. These ones are all paired off. They're gonna have a balance feature. So this is something I haven't really spent a lot of time on, but it's kind of important. What happens is, on this channel here, everything's going to be sent down to the, in this case, panning. So that's going to be to this line here. I can make it left or I can make it right. If I have it in the middle, it's going to be 100% on the left side or 100% on the right side. So as we turn it left, we're taking it away from the right side. And as we turn it right, we're taking it away from the left side. So the sound is always there. We're just making a decision on where we want it to go. So it's always 100% of the sound either towards the left or towards the right versus a balanced. So we get down here, this channel, channel five has one mic input, but it has two channels. So here what's happening is when I turn this knob, I'm going to have less of it on one side and proportionally more of it on the other side. So if I'm using these guys here, these two knobs here, this actually takes away keeps it at 100%, let's say, on the, on the right side, and then starts taking away sound that would have been on the left side. So we're actually losing audio on here. So if I turn this all the way to the right, this left doesn't do anything anymore. Now, that being said, if I only plugged one thing into it, if I only plugged in the actual left channel, so that would be the top one, it would then become a mono input and then would act just like the pan buttons basically meaning that if I go to the left or right, it's always going to be 100% leaning it, pulling it out of one side and bringing it into the other. But if I left it in the middle, it would be equal 100% left and 100% right. So that is what's going on here. Now we see that happen across all these next three channels because of course they have mic input still. So we need to have that standard pan mentality, uh, meaning that we're not taking anything away. We're just pushing it more to one side or pushing it towards the other. So that, there, I hope that helps. Uh, same thing applies to the very end. But again, if you use both, of, if you put plugs in both of these, it's going to respond like a balance. Less of this, once you're in the middle, you're at 100% of that channel, you're going to be taking away the other channel as you keep going to the left. You're going to keep taking away left as you keep going to the right. So that's what's going on there. That's how that sounds. Now, that covers all those plugs. We're going to skip these plugs here for a second. We're going to work our way down the board now. So very first knobs, these are gain knobs. All these red knobs across the top, these are gain knobs. So if we make this an, as easy as possible to understand, if I plug a microphone in here and I come to this gain knob, this is going to increase the sensitivity level or how strong that microphone is. So if I take a microphone, put it down here, when I turn the gain up and down, it's how strong this microphone's response is. The gain is very low, it's very tight, it's a tight little ball. If I turn this gain up three quarters, it's a big microphone. It's a big microphone, it's gonna to listen to everything far away. So if your intention is to sing close and far from the microphone, you're gonna to wanna to increase that gain. But that also allows you to have uh, greater sensitivity to the overall space around it. So that's what gain's gonna do. This does, the intention of turning this knob here is not to make the overall volume louder. To turn this knob is to make the microphone, this particular microphone, more responsive, to hear, to have better hearing of everything around it. That's what's going on with the gain knob. So there you go. Next, you get buttons. You get a lot of buttons. Now the buttons are, in this case, on this mixer, which is nice, it's 75 hertz cutoff. So that means anything below that gets cut off. So if you're recording, or you're working in a studio or in a space like that, or like in this building here where I have air conditioning running above me, it's a nice feature to cut that bottom low end out. We're probably not talking or singing in there. It's not something I wanna do if I have an instrument plugged into it, because of course, 
if I had an instrument plugged into it, I'd probably have those responses. But at the same time, I don't have an open microphone that's going to pick up all that background ambient noise. Normally something you want to turn on for microphones for anybody singing or talking into a mic. It's a very good thing to have. Now, all right, there we go. So if it looks like I've actually moved things around it's because I have. So we're gonna, you know, cut the moving part out. But what I did is now we're gonna talk about compressors, which are right here. So for me to talk about compressors, I need my actual display to work. This is the only time that I honestly can see why I would use a test tone in a video, because to be honest, it's the most annoying sound. Because here, I'll play a little bit of it. That is extremely annoying. So let's not play that. We'll just keep the actual monitor down. I don't have anything plugged into my main right now, and that means I can actually do this no problem. So here we go. If we take our gain, bring this up, and we're gonna purposely turn down our compressor here. Compressors are meant to trim the sound. So if somebody was yelling, uh, but we still want that yelling effect to come through, our meters are up here. Here's our yelling, it's very annoying. We, need, we wanna keep it in check. Now, again, I'll just play that over again. So this way we can have this going right up there. And so now we see that we're actually over way over. Well, let's get a plus six out of it. Okay, so now we're plus six. If I turn up the compressor, you'll notice now we're only at plus three. It didn't chop that off. That would be a limiter. A, a, a limiter would just cut that sound right off. What this is doing is it's compressing the signal down. And as I turn it up more and more, it's going to compress that particular signal down even further. Now we don't see it dropping there past the six to three, but proportionately, let's say, if we have this set at just 25%, it'll take a nine and maybe turn it into a six. As we turn this up, it will turn, let's say, a, six, a nine into a three, and then so on and so forth as we make this louder. It's gonna keep chopping it. And we see it as I turn this up and down, we see the response of this changing yeah, ever so slightly, but that's very, very important. So that's what a compressor is gonna do. We know the compressor is active because it does have a light there saying, okay, we're actually doing something now. And as long as I keep turning this up or down, we're gonna see a response in that. Now, if there is no actual sound, so in between the actual test tones, there's a point of silence there, it goes away. So that's what's happening right there. So there we get all the way plus nine. As I turn this up, look, it's even much more dramatic. We're gonna lose the nine. We're gonna go all the way down. We lose the six, it just keeps moving. So that's what a compressor does squeezes it up, it's like taking air out of a balloon. So we take the air out of the balloon, it's just going to still keep the shape of the balloon so we don't lose any structure to the sound, it's just going to take the harshness, the, the, the volume out of it. That's pretty much what's going on there. That's compressors. Now the next part that we have is, I'm just gonna hit the mute off there and just sort of that off to the side. The next part we have are the blue buttons, which are all down the whole center path. Blue buttons are the EQs for each individual set of channels or channel. Uh, you get the high, which is set at uh, 12 kilohertz, then the mids at 2.5 kilohertz, and then the low at uh, 80 kilohertz. That's what's going on right here. Now each line has its own adjustments. This is really important not to mix it up with the graphic EQ on this side here. We'll get to this in a second, but just let's say this is for EQing the room, the space or output, the audio that's gonna come out of this unit and fill the room. Uh, every room is different, so we do have to make adjustments for the room. This is going to be pretty much fixed. If I put the same vocalists on each one of these inputs, once I dial them in and I get them, this is gonna be set. I don't have to come back and keep tweaking this because people have a style and we'll be able to adjust it and leave it. The next set of knobs down here are going to be first our auxiliary monitor and then our DFX, which is also our auxiliary output as well. So that's, that's what's going on here. Now, difference between the two knobs, this board happens to have digital effects built into it. It has nine, nine effects. It's all gradual. So if I go all the way back down to zero on this end here, we're going to see that the first one's delay and it's proportionally set from zero, a little bit of it, or just, just a hint of the effect, all the way up to, as I turn up that knob up to nine, I'm gonna reach the maximum of the, that effect. Uh, if I wanted a vocal 
or a rotary or a small room or a delay plus verb, I can do that here and I just choose the number ratio that it's giving me. So uh, if I want to have a, a chorus, that's gonna be between 40 and 49. So I turn this dial all the way up to 40 and I'm gonna be into that effect now. And the more I want that effect is the more I dial it up. And then it starts off once again with another effect from 50 to 59. So that's going on there. That's what's connected to this knob down here, DFX. Now you can bypass that. So if I go and I use the digital effects over here and I decide I want to send out a signal, get, get it out of there and I want to return it, I can do that. I can basically use it as a controlled output with a return on it. So that's what's going on here with these controls here. So if I use the AUX and I bring it into here, that'll then return that signal into this guy here. It's basically similar to what I talked about up here, except it's gonna work on the whole board itself. Uh, and that's gonna be every time I put something out of here, not the top, but the bottom, that's going to allow me to control what's going on this knob here. Uh, and it's also a uh, pre-fader. So what that means, another word to throw in there, pre-fader, and there's pre-fader and post-fader. So post-fader means after this, I get to control that. Pre-fader means it has no, uh, it has no corresponding effect to what's going on down here. So if we look at the knobs, we do have a monitor and the monitor is hooked up to number one, which is the monitor. So that's gonna be proportionate. So monitor on this knob here. So here, this would be our post setup. Monitor, monitor. That's on the post, that's on the pre. That's what's going on there. So there you go. If you plug something in here, it's going to basically bypass this and decide this is more important than this. And it's gonna run through that system there. So. There's another thing. That's why you have the two green knobs and you do have to play around with that just so you get a better understanding of what the auxiliary two does. When you plug into there, you get to control it from this knob, but that knob no longer controls the effects. And by the way, that's not a, if, if a system has just two knobs and it has uh, usually two auxiliary outputs on it, it's usually so it can bypass the actual built-in effects and allow you to use an external processor instead. So that's what's going on there. So there you go. Mute basically mutes the channel. That's a button that we locate right underneath the pan that we talked about when we were talking the difference between pan and balance on all the channels that are up here. There's a mute button. It quickly, without having to touch the fader, turn that system off and it's gone and I don't hear it until I need it. So that's what's going on right there. Uh, and then you have a nice little flashy light that tells me that there's a signal coming in on that and it's proportionate to what's going on here. If I turn this down, I still have a signal on it because the line's hot, but I get to control the level of it and we see that response here. So there you go. That is what's going to happen all the way across the board. Again, mutes all the way options on this board all the way to the very end, 11 and 12. Now, why do we actually see this little white area in the middle of the mixer where it says plus five, minus five? It's you're in a dark room. This is a sweet spot right here. This is what you're shooting for find the loudest person in the room and they're the, that's their goal. You do not want to go too far above that or too far below that unless absolutely necessary because the quality of sound diminishes the more you go down because now we're, we have less of the actual sound from this channel to work with uh, quality wise. So which means we're either going to compensate with our main or we're just going to have a real hard time. So remember, it's always best if you're trying to set up your EQ and you're going, well, what do I start with? Well, start with the quietest thing first, which probably be your microphones. Uh, get those up there, find out where you want to have them, adjust the gains, uh, EQ it a little bit if you need be. Uh, then definitely bring in uh, your instruments or your music or whatever you have, your backtrack at the end here, that sort of thing, uh, and have that all plugged in uh, and then bring that up because certain things are always going to be louder than others. You want to have them down a little bit in comparisons to, let's say, all the audio that you need to keep track of and give as much detail as possible. So start with that, then work in the instruments and the background all at the same time, and then you're all set. Now, off to this side. And remember again, not to recap, if you're not using them, leave them down, that's always nice. Uh, these are all outputs. So now we've completed the input side. We're now on to the output side, which is everything that's going on here, uh, plus all the plugs that are on the back side. So 
On the output side, we do have our main, which is kind of the obvious. Then we have our monitor, which is what's coming out of auxiliary one. Uh, so this is going to get its sig this gets its signal. Main gets a signal from what you did on the sliders. Monitor gets its signal from what you did up on monitor out, which is the first row of green right here. Uh, it says AUX and it also says monitor. So whichever ones you turned up here will end up coming out on this slider. That's the monitor out. Now, the main again, anything that I've adjusted down here is going to output here. Now, all of these, this white bar right in the middle of the white bar right across has a zero. We also call that unity. Up here, we have meters. Now, this is a dynamic, so where this is kind of a more of a fixed dB meter here, where I'm making a physical choice. Up here, I'm going to get a dynamic response. So, what did me doing minus 10 dB do to my overall sound? And that's why we call it so it has clipping at the top and has minus 30 at the bottom. Uh, and we're reaching unity right here at the top green knob here. So that is where zero is, that's where unity is. You're trying to achieve that, that's where you're going to get the most sound out of your mixer without distorting or, or you know, increasing it over and above what it should naturally be. So there you go. That's what's going to happen here. These two knobs, I put these on the what's going on after we've made our actual audio. So we're making our music here, we're outputting it, and we're working with it here. So this was our actual DFX. So that was the second row of knobs here. And that's everything that's going on with the digital effects board that's built into the unit. So that is controlled right here. Now, at the same time, if I have an auxiliary return, if I have audio coming into here, maybe I've taken the channel out from auxiliary two and I decided I don't want to have this uh, as my primary for a couple of channels. And I decided to plug in through here. That's going to appear here. These are colored blue because they're not exactly putting out sound, but they're putting out sound proportionate to what's going on here. So if I have these set up to unity and I have these only halfway up, an easy way to explain this is that I'm only going to have 50% of my effects into my main. So whatever audio level here, this is in reference to all of this, the effects that are going on are going to be added to this at a level 50% of the main. If I increase it, if I go zero, it's a one to one ratio. So regardless where I put this, I'm going to have just as much effects here as I would here proportionate. So I'm at unity. I have balanced unity. If I bring this down, it's still everything's going to be proportioned to this knob. Now, if I cut this in half or just add, let's say 25% of this, I put this at unity. This will be at unity. The effects that are added to this are only going to be down here at 25%. So this is always a ratio to this. That's what's going on with these two blue sliders right here. So uh, I also have the ability to mute those out if I don't want to use them, just like I can mute out the monitor or I can instantaneously mute out the main. Pretty straightforward. So there you go. Uh, if your board's all set up, you don't even have to move this up and down. You've got it all set, locked, just hit the mute button and you're all done. Uh, dynamic meters. So now we're up to these blue buttons. Now these blue buttons get a little tricky. The first one says uh, two track in. So that's in reference to the RCA plugs on the input in the back. Now there's a button here and it says main out. So if I have this button raised up, whatever it's going on here from that audio signal on the back side, whatever I plugged in will come from here to my main out. And this will control the proportionate volume it's gonna get. So if I have a 50% here, well, it's gonna be 50% there. Just kind of like how the sliders are here. Um, if I push that button in, it says Q. Q means to the monitors on the, uh, sorry, to the control room on the back. So basically you wanna listen in on it. Do you wanna hear what's going on? Um, that's what's gonna go on right there. So if you, have a, if you have people in another room or in another space behind the stage and you're in front of the house, uh, that's one of those you know ways that you can maybe pipe that audio signal into here so you can listen to it, that sort of thing. So you can always hear what's going on because that'll come out of the speakers that you have. Next one says USB in because remember there is a USB port. Uh, it has two channels out so you can record and it has two channels that come back into the system. Those two channels that are coming in, again, you have a choice. They can either be on the main out coming to here proportionately with this blue knob or we can send them off to the control room in the back. The last one here is for, it says headphones uh, and control room. So uh, it's choice for my headphones. 
Uh, do I want to listen from the mains? Do I want to hear what's going on from the main? Or do I want to hear what's going on from the actual queue, from the actual control room uh, direction of the sound? Uh, that's very important because if there's added background music or stuff like that going on, that's where you're going to listen to it from the queue. Uh, if you want to hear what's actually going on as front of house, what's going out to the speakers, that would be from the main. So that's what you're listening to there. All right, so we're coming up the side here. We've got a phantom button and that's going to turn up to 48 volts on for the mic. So if you have any condenser mics like studio mics or any shotgun mics or pickup mics that are, let's say, on top of a drum set or anything like that, that's going to power that up. Okay, you don't have to worry much about having uh, to have a mixture of microphones. Let's say you have some dynamic microphones plugged in and a few of the condenser style microphones plugged in at the same time. Uh, dynamic microphones don't care if there's phantom power on it. It's not going to do anything to the microphone. That's all good. Uh, you do occasionally, though, find um, that there's an RF signal that comes off the 48 volts sometimes, and that sometimes can interfere with wireless microphones that are plugged into it. Now, that's a hit or miss thing. Doesn't always happen. Uh, it's just nice to know that if uh, you're testing it and you hear that, that could be a cause. So that's one of those things there. Now we get up to the graphic equalizer. Graphic equalizer is going to go from high to low and really you're, it's like cream and sugar in your coffee. You're going to add or subtract what you want. Uh, you always want to play when you're using an EQ. Don't start at zero and make everything higher than zero. That That's not good. Uh, what you want to do is you want to start at zero and make a choice. If you are going to go for a traditional V pattern, I'm going to go plus five, zero. I'm going to work my way down a little bit. I'm going to adjust up a little bit. The idea is I want to split between below unity and above unity. Uh, so this way I get an even sound and I'm not, because anything above unity is going to add to the actual dynamic system. So my main plus the five here is really what's going to happen. So I certainly don't want to be plus 10, plus 15 if I can avoid it. So the idea is bring some down, bring some up. You're going to get a much better balance when it comes to sending out power to your mains. So that's the best way to have a good look at that. Because if you start at zero and work up, well, everything's going to be plus. So that doesn't really help out any. So there you go. Uh, and then you have options. You can just hit this button here, which is basically EQ on and off. So you can hear the difference between what you've done and you can choose to either have the EQ go to the main out, or do you want it to go to the monitor auxiliary output on number one? So do I want it to go here? Sorry, here, or do I want it to go come out the back? And we're running out of things here. Look, we've got our phono jack right on top here. We got a DFX bypass. So this is if you have some crazy effect that's really cranked up because a particular song has this wackadoodle effect that you're gonna have and you need to uh, have that only when that happens. Well, you can get your foot pedal, let's say trigger, and that'll allow you to turn on that effect and then turn it off when you're done with it. So you can kick it in, kick it out, no problem. That's what's gonna happen if you get a pedal that goes there. Uh, that pretty much covers all of that. The USB port on top there is if we talk about it, some of the accessories at the same time, that's so you can plug in a light like this and that plugs in just like that. And if you're working in the dark, you can have that all set up like that and you can just have the mixing board lit up so this way in a dark setup you can now see everything that's going on so that is a very cool little light so that's what's going on there we'll throw links for stuff like that down below uh, outside of that remember you have if i'm not mistaken four ways of actually listening to sound on here you can listen to it through the headphones you can listen to it off of your monitors so these are your stage monitors that are going on up here you've got your control room in the back uh, instead of headphones, you use the control room and you also have, uh, you have your main out. So that's all located on the front side. That's all there. So yeah, there's lots of ways to use this mixer. There's lots of ways to listen to the music being made on this mixer and you've got a choice. You can record it through that two channel through the USB out again. So we covered some of the options, the things you're looking for when you're buying a mixer. You don't always have to run out and buy a new mixer if it doesn't have what you're looking for. If you have a mixer that has RCA jacks on it, those RCAs are specifically for that particular purpose. So sending in an actual flat audio signal from a recorded device or sending it back out so this way you can process it. If I have a cable uh, that I need to plug in and it happens to have 3.5s on it, just like this, 
uh, you're going to want to buy yourself a handful of these guys, which are quarter inch star RCAs. Now people say, oh, you should have the proper cable. But you know what? If you have a bunch of different things, occasionally you have to hook things up. Let's say this is what I need to hook up. This needs to go on channel 11 and 12 in this case. I can take that now, turn those quarter inch into RCAs. I'm going to be able to do my job. Am I going to notice the difference? I don't think so. I mean, I've never really noticed the difference. If you have a good cable at this end here, uh, you're going to be able to do the job just fine with these adapters. They're quarter inch to RCA. Uh, they're available, of course, in our showroom. And, you know, uh, they're also available on Amazon. So we'll have links for that as well. We'll put, you know, they usually buy these in a five pack or something. Uh, other things was the actual cable that we were using earlier. And this, by the way, I just used an adapter. So I had a 3.5 and it was split off to two quarter inch, which could have been used the same way. I need to plug something into here, like a tablet or something. Uh, I could do that and plug it into the tablet. But at the same time, if need be, I have, of course have a adapter from my headphones and I needed to do a send. I need to use the insert. Well, I can use that on the insert right there. And then this turns into well, a cable that can go to a processor and pick up an effect or anything like that and send it back in. So that was something else you can certainly use. A uh, little helpful tidbit of information. Uh, this time of year, I do cleaning in the showroom where I get rid of all these cables that don't work anymore. And all these cables tend to be the free cables that come with product. Um, it's nice that they give you free cable in the box but they tend not to be very good or last very long. So uh, when they stop working uh, once a year, I just basically cut them all up, get rid of them. You always want, even if you got free cables with it, you always want to get good Nutrix type style connectors for a cable. This happens to be from Digiflex. Uh, they were nice enough. We, we have their product here. We sell tons of it. Uh, they gave us one of their samples from their new custom. So if you type in custom cables from Digiflex, uh, you can see that going on there. Uh, for our case, they, you know, I asked them to see what our, our, our store, our showroom colors would look like. So that was green and purple and uh, I changed to green, but you know, overall it was very nice. They, they did that. This cost you like a couple of bucks more. You can get your name put on the actual cable and all that kind of stuff. As a regular customer, as somebody who's just performed, if you're going out to a lot of shows, nice to have your own cables. Right? So instead of just the regular cables, now you have color coded cables for yourself. Now that could have been color coded for the install or color coded for anything, but that was pretty awesome to have that, you know, all done up like that. So there you go. Uh, that pretty much covers it. Uh, I know this is turning into a very long video, so we'll call it like a master class of, you know, everything you need to know about the Alto Professional Live 1202 and then some, because that's really what it is. So if you hung around till the end, I want to say thank you very much. Remember, there's always a good time is any time to subscribe. If you'd like to see more videos like this, let me know down below. Remember, also add your comments or questions down below. We'll, uh, anything I might have missed in this video, I'll try and answer through a Q&A video that'll go along with this and any other questions you may have uh, in about a week from now. So go ahead. Put that there if you see the link down below for the video or you see the link at the end of this video for the q a then you know well i've already done that but you're more than welcome to always put your questions down below we'll cover them as we get them see you in the next video thanks for watching by the way if you like this you know top down view uh also let me know down below uh, if it was helpful that's a big plus uh we'll do other videos like this if you didn't like it also let me know so that's a big plus so well, for today, that'll be it.